If you really want to make progress on meaningful projects, then you have to put in the deep work to move them forward. Today, I'm gonna to share my seven step method to doing just that. Let's go. Hello friends, my name is Matt Brunton. I'm here in the north of England to help you with seven steps, seven steps, yep, to help you move forward and do the difficult deep work. And a lot of people, and I've been like this myself, would put that stuff off. It's easy to jump to the easy thing, the thing that doesn't require much effort, the thing that we can get done quickly. But those sort of tasks like uh, replying to emails and entering data are not things that really move projects forward, things that really help you in, in your career and the things that you're working on to advance. So if you want to do that, you have to learn to do the difficult stuff and you will separate yourself from other people if you can really focus and bring all of your energy to things and you'll be amazed at the results and the difference it can make and how that separates you amongst your peers. So let's jump straight into it. So tip number one is to put aside all distractions. That's the first step. That means the phone needs to go away. That means the notifications need to go off. That means close down your email. It shouldn't be open all day. Whether it's colleagues, perhaps. Uh, if you're in a room where you can shut the door, shut the door. If you're in an open office, the big headphones need to come out. Let people know this is the time when you are focusing. Put away the distractions. Number two, Breathe deeply. Come on, do that now for a minute. You'll feel better. I don't know about you, but I often run around during my day from task to task. No sooner have I finished one thing, I jump straight into the other. I try and squeeze things in in between tasks and fill my calendar and it's exhausting. And I'm not always present and focused with what I need to do. And sometimes we have to slow down. At the very least, take a breath or two in between tasks before you start and before you move into it. Number three, figure out what is the most important thing that you could do right now. What is really going to move the needle? What is really going to make a difference? What is gonna make the biggest impact? What is not the easiest thing to do or the thing that somebody else is pressuring you to do, but what is the most important thing you could do that would make the most difference to your life and your work? So you need to reflect a little bit on your goals and where you want to be and then move backwards towards your actions. If that's my goal, if that's what I see in my future, whether that's a week, a month, a quarter, a year or decade from today, then what are you doing now that is going to move that forward? So right now, today or tomorrow morning, what's the most important thing that you could be doing? And then number four, write that down. Write a clear aim. A clear aim for this focused work period. It might be a morning, it might be an hour, but during this period, this is what I'm going to work on. Now that might be something with a clear end, like uh, send brief to the designer or uh, finish draft of my blog post. Or it might be just that you're working on something, like work on chapter three of the novel or work on about copy for the website, or come up with ideas for my next paintings series. Painting series? What's that? You get what I'm talking about. So sometimes it's a bit more open-ended and sometimes it's a bit more uh, definite, but you need to have a clear aim so you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing, not something general like work on the business. That's too general. It needs to be something specific that you can focus on for a limited period of time. Number five, work on that thing only. That one thing that you've written down should be the only thing that you do without task switching. Now, some people say they're great multitaskers, but what multitaskers really do is quickly switch between lots of different tasks. So they're going through their email inbox while they're also trying to write something and they're also trying to design something and they're also talking to their colleagues and they're switching between all these tasks without giving intense focus to any of them. And your brain is not a computer. Well, it is kind of a computer, but it doesn't work like the, the computer on your desk. And it works much better if you apply it to a focused task and put aside those distractions. You don't allow yourself to task 
switch while you're working on this one most important thing. And my trick for doing that is my next step, number six, to set Pomodoro timers. What is that? Well, Pomodoro timers means that you set uh, a 25 minute timer for your work and then you have a five minute break and you keep working according to that cycle. There's a great website, I'll link in the description, that has this timer built in. So you can just use that, You could, but you can use your phone or whatever devices you've got around. Uh, just set a timer. And this has been a, a game changer for me. I found that when I sit down to do some deep focus work, let's say I'm writing an article. After about 10 minutes, I think, oh, I've had an idea for a different article. I'll just write a few paragraphs on that. Or, oh, I really need to get back to that person. Let me just jump on my email. Let me just fire off a few text messages. But when I see that timer in front of me and I see, no, you've still got 15 minutes to go, it really helps me to bring it back and think, use these next 15 minutes, focus on the one task. And then after that, take a break. And in that five minutes, make sure you stand up, move around, have a drink of water, stretch, and just take yourself away from the screen or the canvas or the whatever tool you're using and have a little break and then come back to it. And I tend to work in 90 minute chunks most of the time. So I'll do 25 minutes work, five minute break and do that cycle three times. And that for me is uh, a really good cycle, a really good duration that I can get at least a couple of those in in the morning, a couple in the afternoon, sometimes more. And that really helps me to move things forward uh, with my work and not just do that thing that I'm sure we've all been in this position where it's mid afternoon and we think, what have I actually achieved today? Don't get stuck in busy work. Don't get stuck just replying to emails or entering data, but take the time to do the thing that really is going to move everything forward. And that's my last tip. Number seven is just enjoy the feeling or let's call it this, make a cup of tea or whatever your beverage of choice is. Enjoy the feeling and the satisfaction that comes from getting lost in work. I know that when I'm designing or writing, or pre preparing a talk or playing music, sometimes time just dissolves. I just lose myself in the task and that is the feeling I'm searching for. And that feeling comes in deep work. It's a great feeling. And it's a double whammy because we also get the benefits of reaping what we sow, of seeing the benefits of pushing through and doing that difficult work and what that brings into our business, our career and our life when we do the hard things that really move things forward. So don't get lost in busy work, do the difficult stuff. Hope these steps have been helpful for you. If they are, let me know. You can drop a comment, drop a like, please subscribe. These things really help this channel because we're just getting started here. Maybe tell somebody about it. I would really appreciate any support like that you could give and I'll be back to talk to you next week.